Hi there, Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. Today I have a fun gift idea that's also an ornament and also a keychain and also a like gift package topper and they are fun to make. And best of all, you probably have a lot of these supplies uh, right in your stash. I've been looking for projects that I can use old wine corks for uh, for quite a while and um, I thought this would be just really fun and a great way to use up stuff and also give a little extra gift at Christmas time. So this one I did with an actual cork wine cork um, and I, I don't know if these are as durable as using the rubber corks but I thought I'd give it a try to make sure it worked and it uh, worked out really well but sometimes you have corks that just aren't very pretty and you just like to kind of have your own design on them so what I did here was use stamps from our sponsor rubber stamp tapestry you can find them online at pegstamps.com and I'll have a coupon code in the video description for you if you want to uh, order some of these cute stamps I used today but uh, what I did is I removed the um the printing on this rubber cork you can use either nail polish remover or you can sand it off with an emery board I like to use this little um, this is like a pencil sharpener piece of sandpaper but any sandpaper is fine um, and then you've got a really great smooth surface to work on so um, I'm going to show you how to make this kind and also this motif here um, I did this with colored uh, stays on ink and markers and I also experimented with different colors and I think I like the red and green standard kind of Christmassy colors the best but you could totally do whatever colors you want. This one I did a little bit brighter. Um, and it's pretty easy. It's a little time consuming to like do the beading, but um, but it's a lot of fun and it lets you use up those corks that you've probably been hoarding over the years. Now let's take a look at the supplies we're going to need for today's project. So the first thing you're going to need, of course, is corks and you can either use the uh, you know natural corks or you can use rubber corks like this one here. Sometimes you'll get lucky and you'll find a cork that's got really cool artwork on it, but other times you need to take the artwork off. And um, what I do is I, I prefer to sand, but um, if that's too rough on your wrists and you can use nail polish remover, it takes about the same time uh, either way, but that will get the, um, the writing off of the cork and it will leave a little bit of a distressed um, surface, which I think looks kind of pretty. You're going to need a couple eye hooks and what you're going to do here is you are just going to insert the eye hooks. I um, mean, these are just little screw eyes. See, like you probably have those. Use them like um, all sorts of little craft projects or picture hanging and stuff and you're just gonna screw one into each end and they're gonna grab pretty well and of course you can get these in silver or brass depending on what you're gonna use for um, for wires and findings and whatnot and I've even gone in the hole from the corkscrew and it still has grabbed pretty well so I even had an issue with anything um, anything pulling loose or you know ripping out. I like to kind of bury it a little deep as well just kind of to make sure there's not going to be that little gap at the end of the eye where wire and stuff can come out. And then to put the keychain on you simply um, you can see how it's split. It's kind of like a really big jump ring. All you have to do is just press it on the eye hook. So see you've got it kind of sandwiched in there and then you turn you slide it to the little gap and you turn it and then you can slide your key ring around until it gets to the other gap and there you've got your key ring on like that. Now there are different kinds of key rings. I think I like the look of this one better but you can also get them like this that have kind of the longer flexible um, you know flexible piece there kind of like the little snake uh, snake cord there and uh, and that's kind of pretty too so just kind of it's up to whatever whatever you prefer really and of course this is the version in silver if you prefer silver beads so pretty easy. So I'm going to show you how to do both of the motifs that um, that use the peg stamps here. I think they're really fun because they they're, they're, this part is pretty quick to make and then you can get as elaborate as you want with the beading. If you don't want to do beading you could always just take some narrow ribbon, go through that eye hook and just tie it on and that would be something the kids could totally do. So for the um, for the holly motif this one's probably a little bit easier just because you're doing stamping and you're not really you don't have to do much coloring. Um, you'll want to have a green stays on ink pad and basically this is just alcohol ink and you could probably even make yourself a one-time use alcohol ink pad with a little piece of felt in a dish and some liquid alcohol ink. In fact this had gone dry so I used my um, Tim Holtz alcohol ink just to reduce it a little bit. So I'm just gonna move this. I'm just gonna set it right there. Now I'm just gonna test it to make sure 
that um, the, it's inky. Yeah, it's still inky. Uh, <laughs> you might not want to do that on your skin because it will stain it a little bit. Um, and then I like to practice, this is going to seem so silly, but I like to practice stamping if I'm stamping on a curved surface on a roll of masking tape. Because um, <laughs> it doesn't matter if I mess it up, I can always use that masking tape still. So you want to make sure your stamp is inked really well. This ink is going to dry quicker than other stamping inks. And then when you apply it, you're going to roll it on. See that? So practice that a couple times on a roll of masking tape until you get the hang of it. Okay, because you don't want to mess up on your corks and you have to clean it up. And then again, we have this other larger holly stamp, which I thought was really pretty. Just make sure you've got that really well inked and just roll it on. And you can see you'll get a really good impression. So I think I'll do this one on this cork right here. Um, I think it's a little easier to stamp if you're doing a big stamp like this before you put your, um, your hooks on. So that's why I'm going to do it on this one. So I'm going to have this bigger stamp on the bottom. So I'm going to just kind of roll it right across and look at that. Doesn't that look great? Now, if you make a mistake, don't worry. You can fill in with any permanent markers. I'm going to do, and you could even, I think I'm going to go around this way so I can see where it starts so I don't overlap. Just roll it on along. And if you do get a little mistake, that's where you can put a berry or you could use a, um, oh, I just stuck my finger in there. Or you could just use a, um, a Q-tip with some alcohol on it to, to wipe it off. Now here where I don't have as much room, I think I'll just start it kind of like halfway through and call that good. Um, now there is stays on cleaner that you can use on these stamps. Um, or you could just use your regular stamp cleaner and let it stain. It really shouldn't hurt it. Just, it'll just be a little darker. Um, it doesn't bother me, but if you are really bothered by it, you can get stays on cleaner or you can use rubbing alcohol to clean it, but then you want to clean it with, um, with your regular stamp cleaner and then follow up with uh, a little glycerin to, um, to condition it because alcohol can dry out your stamps. So you don't want to, you don't want to ruin your investment, right? We spend a lot of money on stamps and we we spend that money with the um, knowledge that we can use this for years to come. So take care of your investment and it will last you years to come. So there we've got our holly all the way around. And you really want to cap up your stamp pad when you're done. And these stamp pads actually come with um, a little liner here. You want to put that on first. That just helps extra alcohol from absorb uh, from leaching out. So hopefully your stays on pads will last longer. I've mentioned before, stays on is not my favorite ink. Um, but for a situation like this, you know, other than using acrylic paint, it's really kind of your best bet. So if you don't have stays on ink, you could take a little acrylic paint and spread it out on a, um, like a piece of styrofoam. That's what I like to do. And then I use that for, um, for a kind of stamp pad. So I'm just using uh, a permanent marker to put some berries on here. Now I'm using a chart pack marker and the reason I'm using chart pack as opposed to a Sharpie is because the ink in a chart pack is not going to smear the other alcohol ink if I happen to go over it, which isn't important on this one. This one, this technique, you could use any old Sharpie, doesn't matter. But when we do the one with the Christmas balls, we're gonna want, um, we're going to want something that's not going to smear because we are going to be coloring right up to the, the black lines and that could, that could cause trouble. Make my little berries a little smaller up here. But I thought this was just a really, really fun um, little ornament idea. And, you know, it's also pretty to put on a, on a gift tag. So after this dries, give it a, give it a second. Then you can go in with like a white gel pen and you can add, um, you can add little highlights on the berries. Just want to do that with a, um, a steady hand. <laughs> I would give it, I would give it a little more time to dry personally, but you know, just, just so that you can see it all come together. Uh, it's not too disjointed. I want to just do it all at once for you there. Okay. So there is that one. I think it's really cute and I'll show you the finished one again, just so you can see. And this one I finished up with green and, um, and red beads. Now you can use glass beads, you can use acrylic beads. It really doesn't matter. Acrylic beads will be a little bit lighter. Um, and you know, my husband had mentioned, I bet that that keychain would float. Like if you, you know, fell out of a kayak or something and that was your key. Um, 
if you want it to be buoyant, I would not use glass beads because I think these might sink it. But that's kind of a cool idea that if you were making this for like um, maybe someone who enjoys kayaking, you could do some plastic beads, some acrylic. Acrylic sounds fancier, doesn't it? But you can get ones that look just like glass. In fact, like this bead right here, that's an acrylic bead, and I think it's just gorgeous. Um, and this one's lighter. This one probably would float would float for you. Uh, so there's something to kind of think about. You know, it's a um, it's a nice idea, I think, especially if you know you have a kayaker who you know just wants to put their car key and a spare car key you know in the kayak if it does tip that's going to float and that's going to be fine all right so the next one we're going to do is the um is the christmas lights and this is my favorite one honestly but i did want to give you an option because you know it's nice to have options so what i'm going to do here is use um this christmas ball well, actually it's a christmas light and i am going to do some stamping here so hopefully this is nice and juicy. Now, if you have a stays on pad that you know you haven't used up the ink, but it's not that bright anymore, um, it just like it looks really faded. Take a little denatured alcohol and add it to the pad, and that will um, dissolve the dried ink in there, so that you have a nice fresh pad again. And I mean, if you do use it a lot, then you'll need to get reinker for it. But um, but generally, I find that I have to I have to just add alcohol to it more often than not because that's just what it needs. Now I want to do red and green on this as opposed to multicolor like I did before. So I want, I want an even number. So I've got one, two, three. Can I fit three more on there? I'm gonna try to fit three more. So I can go, so I can alternate my colors here. We'll dip one longer four. Maybe I'll do one up in Cricut. Five, oops. Well, I'll show you how to fix those in a second because that happens, right? We we miss stamp, especially on, on a crooked surface like that. Six. Okay, so I've got a couple accidents there that didn't stamp very well, so that's a teachable moment, and I'm going to show you how to fix that. What you want to do is grab a Sharpie. A Sharpie has alcohol ink in it, the same as your stays on pad. So remember, we want to put our little our little uh, protector in there. Set that aside. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to fill in. just like so pretty easy and I'm also going to use the sharpie to make some like a cord to make a cord so I'm gonna go make some loopy lines connecting all of these guys together and my Sharpie's running out of juice. A nice fresh one here. I think the loops add some fun character to them. There. Okay, so we want to let that dry. And then we can go ahead and color in our little ornaments. And like I said, the chart pack marker has a different type of ink in it. It's a xylene based ink, so it um, it smells really strong. I will warn you, um, if you if you're sensitive to smells, I would not try these. In fact, what I would just use is just some acrylic paint to fill it in. But uh, the nice thing about this is that it doesn't want to um, it doesn't want to lift up your alcohol ink. And if you've ever done like um, coasters, like you can stamp on the tiles from the home improvement store then and then color them in if you stamp with your stays on and then you color them in with the chart packs it doesn't bleed the stays on ink so they it's like they don't see each other they're invisible to each other which is what you want when you're doing that uh, mixed media coloring there uh, so there's another gift idea for you you can make some coasters i do have a video on that um on my channel using the peg stamps if you want to check it out i'll try and link it up in the uh in the i card so you can so you can find that but i find this to be really um really useful. You could also use acrylic paint markers and we're going to use an acrylic paint marker for some accents in a second. So it's it's a kind of a fun way if you've been collecting different materials to put them to use and to make something really uh, really neat. So you know if you're if you're feeling like oh I have way too many markers, way too many supplies, well sometimes it's nice too because when you have different ones you can use them together and they don't interfere with one another. So there's just our plain colored ornaments. Now I'm going to grab a gold marker and this is a metallic marker from Arteza and it's um, it's a it's a paint marker and I can go in and add gold caps to my ornaments here 
and I'm just doing little lines because I think it's cool to kind of see some of that shadow from below, from the ink color below. And I'm just doing that on all of these little guys here. And then as a final touch, just like we did on the um, on the holly berries, we're going to add highlights and that's going to make them look a little shinier. So we kind of go, I like to do like a little curvy line up to the top and a couple of spots on the bottom. And you can even do, you could even do the, um, the little cap too. So just go ahead and do that on all of your ornaments. And then we can get to the beading. Not the beading, the beading. That sounds awful. <laughs> get ready for your beading, guys. Oh, gosh. Okay, we have this all uh, colored. So now what we're going to do is just set this aside. Uh, that white ink might take a little bit of time to dry. So I'm just going to kind of set it up on its edge, kind of like that. So hopefully it doesn't touch anything. And for the beading... Oh, close. The, the auto captions on this video are going to be hilarious, I feel. Um, I'm going to grab some tiger tail wire, and tiger tail is a type of beading wire. It, you can get it in pretty much any color. Generally, I use gold, um, silver, or black, or copper. But just find it, try to find something that matches the key ring that you're going to use, but don't be too, too fussy about it. And I'm going to grab anywhere between... I would say eight and 10 inches. And depending on how many dangles you want, that's how many pieces you're gonna cut. Each piece is gonna make two dangles. So if you wanted a three dangle one like this, you'd cut two pieces. And then when you go to add your beads, you would use two strands together for one of them. So you'd end up with three. For these that have six dangles, I used three pieces of wire and then I just bet, uh, beaded every wire individually. And I really like the look of this one because it's a little daintier and the wires are a little bit shorter. Uh, so, you know, looking at those, decide what you like best and go for that. So I'm going to go go ahead and do three pieces of wire. So I have six dangles because I really like that. Now I am using separate wire clippers to cut my wire, all, even though these three in one tools have wire clippers. Uh, because I'm using really tiny beads today, I find that if I... Um, if I use the wire cutters that come on my 3-in-1 tool, it just leaves a little bit of a burr on the end, and then it's difficult to thread the seed beads on. I'm going to move a bunch of this stuff out of the way so you can clearly see the beading, but I just wanted to go over some of these supplies um, in case you're new to any bead crafts. So what you're going to need for these are some beads of different sizes. So I've got tiny little seed beads in these little vials here. Then I've got slightly larger beads called e-beads here, here, and here, and they're going to take up the bulk of our beading. Um, then I have some other, I have this bead right here. It's like a, a triangle type bead just for something fun and different. And then I've got some medium sized beads here for the ends and to go into the middle of my strands just to break it up and give me a little variety. Um, I didn't pull any, oh yeah, I also have some bugle beads, which are these, they're like seed beads, but they're long skinny tubes, but, but they're about the same diameter as a seed bead. So what you want to do is just grab a variety of beads um, that you have on hand, smaller ones, misfits, leftovers. They're all going to work really well for this project and then I'm going to set this aside and um, and we'll get to beading. Oh, you're also going to need crimp beads, which are what secures our beads on the wire, and a couple pliers um, to... Actually, I don't even think we need the pliers. Actually, now that I think about it, you will need a pair of crimp pliers. These I don't think we're going to actually use. Okay, this is what you're going to need first. You have, um, of course, the key ring that we pre prepared already with a cork. We've got... Um, little C, little uh, crimp bead. Um, we've got our wires and we've got a large bead and that's going to kind of harness them all together at the top. So you're going to pick up your wires and hold them together and try to get the ends fairly close. And we're going to go through that eye pin on the bottom. Okay. And then we are going to feed on that first bead. And this is going to um, kind of corral everything together and just kind of give us a cool, a cool look. So that's what we got right there. And I mean, even just that alone looks pretty darn cool. Then you're going to take one strand and you're going to decide whether you want it to be green or red. And I'm going to start with some e-beads. Now I want to show you this little tool here. This is called the bead bug and you can actually use any like rubberized clip. They even have um, these rubberized clips for six for a dollar at the Dollar Tree if you want to use those. But I'm just going to put that there and that's just going to hold these out of the way. And it's also going to keep this guy from sliding off until we have this strand beaded. Once that's beaded, it really doesn't matter. So 
what I like to do, because I'm right-handed, is I'll put a bunch of beads in my um, in my left hand here. I'm just going to grab a couple. So hopefully I can just kind of go through and do everything all at once. And don't worry, you're not going to have to watch me do every one of these. And please feel free to skip ahead if you, um, you know, if you kind of got the gist. I'm going to start by, and uh, also I, I just made an eye appointment because I'm realizing I, I just, I hit the 40 mark last year and uh, the old eyeballs, the old peepers aren't, aren't what they used to be. So I'm going to try to keep this in frame, but basically I am simply threading on beads. I like to do odd numbers, so I'm going to do like three bugles. Oops, ah, I just shot that one across the room. Good thing there's nobody sitting over there. There we go, and then I think I'll do um, a couple of these e-beads. These are really great to work with. The other wonderful thing about this is once I got into kind of doing some jewelry, I had bought um, beads that weren't very good and I didn't realize it. They were definitely more craft quality than like jewelry quality. And because you can see, look how uneven these are. See, those are all, those all should be the same. You know, they all came from one package. They should all be the same. But um, the thing I found that if I buy beads at the craft store as opposed to like ordering them from a bead shop, the quality varies quite a bit. Um, so my advice would be to use those up in projects like this because you don't need uniform beads for this. In fact, if they're all a little different, they're going to look a little bit better. I'm sure this is very painful for a lot of people to watch because I'm so very slow at it. So let's just finish up this strand, and uh, when I get to, to the end, I will meet you back here. Okay, I am at the, pretty pretty close to the end here. I've just done this random assortment of beads. Honestly, I think it looks, it looks prettier the more random you have it. And what I'm gonna do is thread on my ending bead. Now, I don't know if you can really tell, but this, um, the hole in this bead's a little bigger than what I need. If I was just to put this on the end and then put a crimp bead on the end, which are these tiny little silver ones that you could probably barely see on camera. See how tiny that is? Um, it would slide through and then my beads would slide off. So that is not a good solution. So instead, I'm gonna use a seed bead. And look how teeny those are. This is gonna be, this is gonna allow me to end off the strand um, and, and plug the hole. It's the seed bead is still bigger than the bead hole. Um, from that bead, so it's not going to let this bead slip off. So I'm just going to put this teeny weeny little seed bead there. So teeny. And then I'm going to slip on this um, this little crimp bead, which I can barely see the hole in. I probably need reading glasses. Or, gosh, I hope I didn't need bifocals. <laughs> and now I'm going to grab my, my crimp uh, pliers. If you don't have crimp pliers, you are perfectly fine to use these to squash that that bead um, that bead flat. Um, if you're going to do a lot of jewelry with like dangles on it, then I would invest in a pair of these. But just for this project, you can go right ahead and use this. But I will show you how to do it properly with the crimp pliers, just because it looks a little bit nicer. But it's honestly you can use either. That's why I had those pliers out. Uh, so what you're going to do? These crimp pliers have gaps. If you look there, you'll see there's there's a couple gaps there in the pliers. They're not flat like a regular plier. So what you're going to do is you're going to grab the bead first in the second gap and squish. And then you're going to turn it. Can, oh gosh, I don't know if you can really see that on camera. There, see how it kind of almost looks like a, a C or figure eight? Then you're going to grab that in the first um, groove and you're going to smoosh it again. Now your your pliers, when you buy pliers, they should have the instructions in there. See how it looks like a little silver bead? Now let me show you what this would look like if we did it with the pliers. Cause, like, I have a little space, a little extra um, stuff there so I can show you. So if you don't have those pliers, you just have regular pliers, just go in there and give it a smoosh once and it will have a little square on the end. That's what it will look like if you use um, regular pliers and that's what it looks like if you use crimp pliers. So, I mean, it doesn't look bad. Um, just if you have these, that's how you use them. So, you know, do do whatever you like. And then you just clip trim it short, and that's how you do the strands. And then just repeat it for each of the strands, strands you have left. I wanted to give you one more tip here. Um, you can see I've got all the different strands beaded. So this is actually called a tassel when you have a bunch of uh, beaded strands like that. Um, so before you trim the wire, what I want you to do after you've attached your, your current bead is just to get your fingernail in there, give it a little tug. If it's sliding, you want to take that bead off 
and put a new one on um, because if that's not on securely all the beads on that strand are going to go so you want to do that before you cut it so that you have room to uh, to work and put another one on there so give it a nice tug as long as it's not going anywhere then you can go ahead and cut it flush just like that and I just think it's so sparkly and fun and I think it'd just be an adorable keychain so to make this a little more festive on a package um, you're going to want to put a bow on there and this is a great excuse to use up those tail ends of ribbon like this is just a like a I don't know, it's about a 10 inch scrap, but it's too short to tie a proper bow because it's so wide. So this is perfect. I'm just going to tie that on the ring and it's going to look so pretty on top of a gift package or hanging from a Christmas tree. Anytime you have faceted beads and a faceted bead, it's a type of bead that's got like little um, little flat edges all the way around and it, see when I move it, it catches the light and sparkles. That's so pretty um, anytime you have an ornament that's like that. So I'm just going to tie it on. Um, this is a this is a uh, single faced ribbon meaning one side is a little prettier than the other so I like to try to turn it so that the pretty side is out I mean both sides are pretty but it just so the shiny side is out and um, you do want to fold it in half and use a pair of nice sharp scissors like your fabric scissors just to notch the ends and then let's do that to both sides and then I'm going to show you what I like to do um, I'm going to keep it from fraying with a product called Fray Check, but you can use any glue that you like, any sort of white glue or cl clear glue is a little bit better. Something Definitely something that dries clear. And that's just going to make it so it doesn't fray. And so what I do is, is another tip here. I, I tape a little... Um, a little pin to the side of my fray check because sometimes because it is a type of glue the nozzle will get um, will get clogged and it, it happens kind of frequently uh, the fray check is nice because it doesn't stain the ribbon so even though it looks kind of um, kind of discolored here where it's wet where I'm putting the fray check on this just seals down the edge I'll show you one that I've already fray checked so you can see that it does um, it does go invisible you don't see that um, that that kind of dark stain when you're done and that's how you finish off this cute little ornament I think it's a lot of fun and uh, and these are a great way to use up some of those odds and end beads that you might have um, so here I'll show you the the fray checked one you can't you can hardly even tell yeah you can't even tell you can feel that it's a little stiffer this edge is, is stiff and but you don't really see the staining from the um, I don't think I actually I don't know if I fray checked that one I don't think I fray checked that one I still have to do that one <laughs> but uh, here's one that's definitely done because I can feel that it's stiffer on the end it doesn't look any different it just feels a little stiffer and it's going to keep you from having a messy frayed edge there so another option I wanted to show you in case you want to do like maybe just um, an easier one that doesn't have so much beading let's go back to our first um, our first holly one that we stamped right here and we're going to go ahead and put our eye hooks in and we'll do silver just for something different and this also was a fun idea if you had like a maybe a guest key maybe you have having friends come over for the holidays and they're staying with you you could give them a key to your home like a spare key on um, on a cork like this and then you know it'll be easier for them to find in their in their purse or their bag and um, and then they'll remember oops I gotta give that key back before I leave <laughs> you know they'll remember it won't it won't get lost so again with our keychain a keychain is like a super huge jump ring. We're just going to push that down, push the crease there right down onto the eye hook. We're going to give it a little, pull it down to the, do you see the, the split there at the end? We're going to turn it and we're going to just feed it on like that. And when it gets to that gap, then it's on there really secure. So um, you can kind of leave that like that. Maybe put the put your spare key on there for your friend who's you know spending the holidays with you. And then you're just going to grab some ribbon to decorate it. And I'm using this narrow ribbon because a it's really easy to find. Probably you have some of this at home. It's very inexpensive. It goes on sale all the time, especially around the holidays for like five spools for a dollar at any of your big box craft stores. They usually have those uh, those narrow off ray spools for cheap. And we're just going to thread that through the eye hook. These were, when I was little, we used to do um, barrettes. We used to buy these like um, silver barrettes and we would weave these in, on our barrettes. It was really, it was the 80s hair accessory to have. There we go. Give this a nice tug. And then, um, and then there you go. And you can fray check those ends as well to keep them from fraying. And there you have a fun little, um, little way to display your, uh, your spare keys, give them to a house guest and 
they will be all set. And there you have it. If you would like to find any of the stamps I used, you can find them at Rubber Stamp Tapestry. Check them out at pegstamps.com and don't forget to check out the coupon code in the video description to save you more on your purchase. Thank you so much for watching. Until next time, happy crafting.